Salawam who praises the hour of Bashem Yah Shah Bashem Arakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great most on the rule well. And Shalom to the whole four elect. It's Payal of the James London camp. Um and this is the title of this video will be um determined upon upload. I I'll go it in mind, but I can't remember it right now, but it will be in the title. And basically what I want to delve into is um, dealing with fear, right? Because the time we're heading into right now, the time we're in right now, basically, you know, it's we're heading into the time of Jacob's trouble, all right? The hour of temptation, where basically things that's never happened upon the earth are going to happen, never happened before are going to happen, and things that will never happen after are going to happen. So that shows you, you know, the the peak of this, right? This is basically Satan's summit, his highest point, right? And um, we're we're gonna have to go through it, and we're gonna have to show ourselves men. But in saying that, we have um, you know, the Lord's after he conquered um the flesh, right? And he he basically went into the spiritual realm. He received, he was able to open up the book, and send forth the Holy Spirit. Which he spoke of before he before he's passing in the book of John the fourteenth chapter, and he said about it be you know the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit that will come and comfort you and sup with you and basically um be there to to help you through the, through um everything you go through right but in saying that you know I want to go into like a a very powerful example all right because you know, this video first off is inspired by Apostle Aram. I did a video a few days ago. I've been meaning to get this video done for a while, but the spirit didn't allow. Now, so yesterday, last night, I didn't even get to watch the video in full. But um, Apostle Kabar put up a video about Yahweh Shai. Um, when he bared his cross, he didn't bear the, the weight of it, basically. He was helped, all right? So um this is in line with that with that kind of, that video. I don't like I, I would have done a, a like a re um you know a re to um you know a response video basically to that video but I haven't watched it to really, you know, do that. But it's in tune with basically the time we're heading into, you know, that we do have something to help us through the times we're heading into. Right, and um, Lord willing, you be edified. So this is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the 17th chapter and the 12th verse. It says, For fear is nothing else but betraying of the suckers which the suckers which reason offereth, and the expectation from within being less, counteth the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment. All right, so I'm going to read it again and break it down. So it says, for fear is nothing else but a betraying of the suckers which reason offer, offereth. So basically what, what's being said here by Solomon is that fear, this is this is what fear is. Fear is nothing but the betraying of the suckers, which is comfort, basically. Okay, the comfort of, um, of which says the suckers which reason offereth. And reason basically is wisdom, all right, is the truth of the matter. Right, so fear basically betrays that comfort that you have, all right, and it's you know it's a betrayal, but it doesn't mean that that comfort that sucker isn't really there because it is, all right, because it's reason, all right, it's based upon reason, it's actually built upon a, a solid um grounding, all right, but it says. And for us, it's faith, all right? That's what, what the reason is. It's the faith in Yahweh, Barsham, Yahweh, Barsham, Arakar, Kudash. It says, and the expectation from within being less counteth the ignorance more than the than the cause which bringeth the torment, all right? So basically, you know, the expectation, you know, that demon on you, that's within you, being less counteth the ignorance, all right? basically more than the cause that brings the torment so you basically hold you know the ignorance in higher esteem than the actual cause what is the actual truth of the matter that brings the torment 
right? Because once you get to the root of the problem, you'll be able to basically reason your way out of that puzzle, all right? You'll be able to connect the dots and make your way out of it and, and be back into, you know, a reasonable state of being, okay? And, um, you know, this is science that really is, is, is the flesh, all right? The Lord said it, man. Watch and pray for the for the the flesh is um for the spirit is willing but the f flesh is weak all right and and that's why he also said in john 6 and 63 that it's the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit if nothing the words that are speaking to you they are spirit in their life so the thing that's going to offer us reason is his words all right and that's why i want to bring this example out all right because ultimately as the lord said in the book of ephesians the sixth chapter we have faith as a shield all right so if you're being attacked by demons you shield with your faith all right another example of faith is also known as you know you know being rooted and built up in faith so as a plant or tree in the faith your roots have grown deep and deep into the into the firm soil of yahweh basham yashai basham harakakudash so that the when when the wind comes to try and knock you about your roots are deep enough to, to withstand it. That's the same thing with the shield. You have that shield of faith. No attack can get through that shield of yours. All right. But then what do you use? Because I mentioned it in John 16 63 about the word, the, the words I speak, speak unto you, their spirit and their life. But it's also known as what? The sword. All right. The word of the most High is known as the sword. So that's what you also utilize to cut through all the BS that's thrown at you. All right. And then with in doing so, all, that's why the word is a double-edged sword. Really, it's like through handling it, it's going to cut you before you have the ability to cut the people, all right? Because then that means, that, you know, there's no holes in your game kind of thing, you know? No one can bring nothing to you that, you know, that is going to knock you, you know, make you lose the, you know, the, the fear, I mean, the reason, all right? So I want to get into this example, all right? And it's the Lord. The best example I can always use is the Lord, all right? But he, he, this, this, you know, this video or these precepts, shall I say, they're very inspiring to me. And I hope, you know, it's it can really build some brothers up in the faith because I believe it's a powerful example to really show you that. You know what we're dealing with, what time we're in. Okay, so this is Luke 22 and 42. All right, so I'm going to read it through and um, break it down wherever and wherever. So it says, I'm um, saying, so it's Luke 22 and 42, going to read down to 46. So it says, Saying, Father, and this is the Lord when he went to the garden to pray before being betrayed by Judas, all right, because he knew what was about to happen. All right, as he prophesied on many occasions prior to this happening, all right, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. What's the cup that he's asking to be removed from him? He's asking a cup of going up on the cross and going through all the torments that he knows he has to go through, all right. He, he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done, all right. And he said, Not of my own will. But so that your will, could, you know, of your will, he more or less saying, look, is there another way we can do this? All right. And, you know, this is the prayer that he sent up because he was, why would he send up a prayer like that? Why would he ask for another way? Because he, he, had, he was heavy in fear. All right. So verse 43, it says, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. All right. So basically that's what happened. It said, look, when when he when he sent that prayer, the Lord sent supplication unto him. Because I know there's other when you read other parts of the gospel, basically he prayed three times and he received no answer. Alright. But this example shows you one little tidbit of information that basically shows a you know greatness, alright. And that's in that light of what the title that I read from Apostle Gabar. I ain't watched the video yet. But dealing with the fact that he had help when he was bearing his cross, all right, and it's the same thing. He he had help while he was bearing his cross, but then also before he was even gonna bear his cross, he was showing that he's gonna have help in the form of an angel, all right, coming before him, 
And also, when you go back to before, after he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights, and he endured Satan, and his, 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 um, his, um, his, um, his um, temptation, he basically, you know, after all of the challenges, he basically was supplicated by the angels. So it says, let me read this verse 43 again. It says, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. So an angel sent down before the Lord to strengthen him in the spirit. All right. But let's read on. It says, verse 44. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. He's in great fear. He was heavily grieved, man. Lord was going through it. That's why it says this. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. So he started to sweat blood. That's the heaviness of fear and dread that he had upon him. Even after the angels showed himself to him. All right. And he said, and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciple, he found him sleeping for sorrow. All right. So he basically found them sleeping for sorrow. All right. And then he, he says, and said unto them, all right, why sleep ye? Rise up, rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. All right. So basically, that's what happened before. You know, the law was basically taken away. But the fact that the angel come to strengthen him, even though it was in heavy fear, shows you that the Lord was dealing with what he was about to do. All right. He was strengthening him to show you, look, you're built for this. All right. This is what you came to do. And the Lord knew this. Right. He prophesied of it many times and it went over the heads of his, the disciples at the time. All right. He knew he was going to go through this. He knew he knew that he what his ministry was going back to when he actually read the book of Isaiah and closed the book and let everyone know that look, I come to, to bring the tidings of the Heavenly Father. He understood that immaculately. But then in understanding that, what also did he know? He knew about his his visage being marred more in appearance than anyone else, all right, than any man. All right. And also through the straps of him being, you know, chastised by the straps of men that he'd healed the nation of Israel. But at the real the real the reality of that dawned in on him, all right, and that's why he became with he came down with heavy fear. But then what? Ultimately he was strengthened by faith, all right, to endure it. That's why the angel of the Lord was presented before him. All right. And there was many mercies shown to really hope in him to move forward and do it. All right, but the main reason why he endured all these things is for this reason and this reason alone, or one of many reasons. But the prominent reason I want to harp on right now to help you know to bold to strengthen you in your faith. So, this is um, I'm gonna read from this part here to the end. <laughs> Of the chapter, so this is the book of Hebrews, the second chapter, and the fourteenth verse. So it says, "Where for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same." All right. So the Lord, this is all about the Lord. All right. He took part. He partook in the flesh of the blood, and guess what? He took. He partook in a far superior manner because he was the first man, being Adam. All right. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. Alright? And that's why he partook to basically destroy death, alright, which is the devil. Okay? So he, he took he participated on, on a higher level. It says, and delivered that them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to board bondage. Alright? Being under the curse that was brought about by Adam, right? The first Adam, okay, will will in fear to death, all right, which ultimately is sin, okay, and shows you, and really is dealing with the covenant, the first covenant that we, you know, we weren't able to bear, so we'd always die due to our falling, our shortcoming in serving the Heavenly Father. Verse 16 For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham, okay. So he came down in the flesh. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful, 
be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to the Most High, Yahweh, all right? To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted, all right? So you see that the Lord, and I started with that scripture, all right? With Wisdom of Solomon, the 17th chapter, dealing with, um, you know, fair is the, you know, the, the betrayal of the succor that reason offereth, all right? But basically, the Lord went through all of that and he even got tempted, he felt so heavy in the spirit that he prayed three times, sweated blood, had an angel prepared before him. And through all of that, those temptations to show you the gravity that he dealt with the things that we're going to deal with and we are dealing with presently, all right? And that's why he did that. So I'll read, and, it's the, and the point is in the last verse, which I'm going to reiterate. So it says, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, all right? He went through the furnace of affliction, all right? And he was shown to be a man of 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 gold, of precious gold, all right? For in that he himself have suffered being tempted, he's able to secure secure them that are tempted. All right? And that's what that's being done in what manner, all right? It tells you in the book of um Revelations uh the third chapter that the Lord will knock on the door and if you answer he will come in and sup with you. And that's being done by what I mentioned before, the Holy Spirit. So that's really our succor. It's it's the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay. His Holy Spirit supping with us, all right, when we're tempted to get us through. That's why it says in Romans the fifteenth chapter, the things that are written before time are written for our learning, all right? Because these things that are written, these acts and these little, you know, snippets into the heavenly, the, the, sorry, into Yahweh Shai's life, all right, and all the things he enjoyed, basically help us to go through the things we're going to go through. And that's why he also says in Sirach, the second chapter, man, look at anyone that trusted in the Lord and did he ever, did he not deliver them, all right? All the men in his faith, all right, that dealt with the Heavenly Father, they always, all right, were saved. And normally, if you even die in the faith, you're going to be the first that's going to be risen to come back with Yahweh Shai, which is a glory in itself, all right, to say that you was on the fathership when you come and Yahweh Shai took out everything. So, um, you know, with that, I pray you're edified, you know, Lord willing, this was uh, uh, um, an edify, edifying video, and you've been building up in the faith. Until the next one, I say Shalom.